Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is August the 3rd, 2020. Let's talk sports business, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've already made a couple videos on Mike Tyson's upcoming fight, Mexican Independence Weekend, against Roy Jones. But, let me just say, as excited as I am for the fight, and I believe ultimately it'll take place, I just don't believe it's going to take place Mexican Independence Weekend. Right. Understand, California has been very hard hit. I mean very hard hit by the coronavirus. Southern California, where the fight is supposed to take place, has been very hard hit by the virus. I have a uh, season ticket to a California University's football game. They've just offered me a refund. Right? A refund. The Pac-12 has agreed to play league games. They just haven't agreed to do so in front of crowds. Understand, everyone is taking financial hits right now. So, count me as a skeptic. I know the powers that be aren't saying so. But if there's serious money behind this Mike Tyson, Roy Jones fight, right? If they're expecting a crowd, keep in mind the venue was an outdoor venue, it wasn't an indoor venue. They weren't going to fight in a bubble. This was an outdoor venue. They're expecting people, right? Because big money is involved, if the people aren't going to be allowed, to show up. If you're going to have social distancing where, you know, every six seat gets filled, then this event is not going to be financially viable for Mexican Independence Weekend. Expect Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones to be rescheduled like so much has been rescheduled to sometime later in the fall. I'll be surprised in this environment where the coronavirus has made a comeback. I'll be surprised if this fight happens as scheduled as is being reported. Let's switch gears. You know, the biggest news in sports often takes place when no one is fully paying attention. You have a huge story. That's just broken. Danny Garcia, right, whose family's from Cuba, whose major client is Dwayne The Rock Johnson, right, who has produced several Hollywood movies, who used to work for Merrill Lynch, who used to run her own wealth management firm. She, along with Redbird Capital and Dwayne The Rock Johnson, have made an offer to buy the XFL for $15 million. Folks, this is huge. Huge, for a host of reasons. Right, the first is that the XFL has name recognition and was a great product. You have several XFL guys who've been signed by NFL teams. Several, right? Including multiple quarterbacks. I was talking to friends. Now keep in mind, this is while we were watching some XFL games that charitably had 20,000 fans in the stands. I was talking to friends about the product. We were all impressed. I would go into bars and see an XFL game on and I would
be thrilled by it. I thought the league was headed in the right direction before, of course, the coronavirus unexpectedly changed things. So the product is good. Importantly, the technology that they could use is in existence right now, and it could be compelling. Right? I was watching a baseball game the other day, and I got sucked into it. Let me just applaud Major League Baseball here. So you had the crowd noise, you had the sense of excitement, then I had to stop myself and ask the question, where is this crowd noise coming from? One of the players hit a ball into the outfield and you looked and the seats looked packed. Then you realized that was a computer simulation. Right? It was then I started to realize that the entire space behind home plate had empty seats. They easily could have filled them with computer-generated people. Easily. They do it in Hollywood all the time. Someone who produces Hollywood movies like Danny Garcia would know how to bring people together to get this done. Now let me just say, what the XFL needs to consider doing is blurring reality. Right? Rather than have 15, 20,000 people in the stands. How about on TV? Augmenting the crowd. You don't have to be completely fraudulent. You can say, you know, at today's game, we have 20,000 paying fans. But understand, the goal here is really to excite fans wherever they are. Right? The goal is to excite fans watching on TV. With today's technology, the XFL could play in reasonably sized venues and can give the illusion on TV to having a sellout, or at least, let's say, 40,000 fans, right? They could dress up the show at minimal cost using computer graphics and could deliver a product that's close to NFL-level football. Let me also say this, too, and I don't say it lightly. Danny Garcia is Cuban. It's about time that we have a woman of color who owns a professional sports league. Understand, when you have someone who owns the sports league, not just a sports team, I understand there are people in NFL history like Georgia Frontieri, who owns sports teams. Okay, great, this is different. The person at the top would be a female. That's a big change from the past, folks, in professional football. And a woman of color. That's also a major change. We've had a series of things taking place in football recently that seem to be anathema to the old status quo. Right? Players upset with police treatment of poor people and people of color. Deciding to kneel during the national anthem, which the league insists on playing before games, something they didn't used to do for decades. Well, let's flip the script a little bit. How about having a league that's headed by a person of color who needs to actually engage in the dialogue of what's happening to people of color in the United States of America? 
Let me also say, too, there are many casual fans. When I was growing up, my mom would sit down with me and my dad and other members of my family, and she would barely know the names of the teams. Right? Well, the bottom line is, when you have Hollywood people who can actually attract Hollywood celebrities to the games, right, that might draw in a lot of new fans. Let me say this too. Oliver Luck right now is suing the XFL, right? He believes they breached his contract. He wants more than $20 million. You know, the easy way for the XFL to resolve that lawsuit would be to just honor his old contract. The reason why that's big news is then you would have a guy with NFL managerial experience playing a key role in the organization. So, I'm excited. I'm even more excited knowing that Redbird Capital is involved. Understand, these folks have business dealings with NFL-related entities, right? These folks have other sports investments. Redbird Capital right now controls more than $4 billion. That tells me that this league, with huge upside, just look at the market cap of the different NFL teams, right? The XFL has room to grow 30X, 40X, 50X. In your town right now, isn't there a bit of a void during the sports year? Once the Super Bowl is played and you no longer have pro football, if you're one of those fans like me who gets a little bit antsy, wouldn't it be great to have this league continue? So, it's big news. Don't overlook it. The bankruptcy court in a few days is going to either give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the deal. I can hardly imagine a better group to buy the XFL than this one. It's groundbreaking. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.